Hey guys, this is David Fine from Keys Mods, and this series is designated to give some instructional videos on how to properly care for and curate a scientific insect specimen collection. So today, guys, we are going to be talking about a process which takes patience, but this is my rehydration chamber. This is right. When your bugs dry out and you haven't mounted them yet, or if you need to remount them, you need to make one of these so that you can rehydrate your specimen so that it's flexible enough to spread into the position that you want them to be in. So guys, let's get to this video where I explain the process of a rehydration chamber. All right, guys, if you're gonna mount butterfly and moth specimens or beetle specimens, it is definitely always better to mount them when they're freshly caught. So their natural body fluids, it's always better to mount them when they have their natural body fluids. Rehydration chambers uh, are great and they, you know, they, they enable you to, um, you know, store your specimens in envelopes and then rehydrate them at a later time. But they, you lose flexibility, you lose, you can break antennas, you break legs, water dries out a lot faster than their, fa than their natural body fluids. And so uh, I always typically like to mount my specimens as soon as I can when I get in from the field. But sometimes it's not possible. Uh, and we are going to show you the, the ins and outs of a rehydration chamber. So what's the deal with a rehydration chamber, guys? It's really simple. This is just a Tupperware container. In fact, I bought this thing in Costa Rica when I was there when I was 19 years old. I'm going to date myself here, guys. That is... 20, uh, 20, 25 years ago. Okay, so this, this thing is 25 years old and I have rehydrated, I can't tell you how many insects in this one Tupperware container, okay? So this is like a half gallon, I think, uh, round Tupperware container. It doesn't matter how big the size is, all right? So you just gotta make sure that it, it, it's airtight to some degree. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you the insides of a rehydration chamber. So like, what, what do we got in here, all right? The first thing we're gonna do is we put some kind of a substrate, and this is literally fish gravel. You can use sand, you can use whatever. And this is a substrate that is porous, and the purpose for the substrate, and I've actually got about, about an inch and a half or two inches thick of the substrate inside of here. And this is where you put your water. Okay, so I would, if I really wanted to be good about rehydrating my bugs, I would go boil some water, nice and hot, and then pour it in here because hot water evap you know, evaporates and causes steam. The steam rehydrates your insect specimens a lot faster than cold water. So cold water will get it done, but I like to, if I wanna get my specimens nice and flexible, boil your water, make it really, really hot, put your water in here, and then, then you're ready to go. Now, I also like to sprinkle some chlorocresol crystals in here. Uh, chlorocresol is a fungus inhibitor and it'll keep mold from growing. So if you forget your specimens in here for a couple days, uh, and like, oh man, I forgot I put specimens in my rehydration chamber, uh, you're not gonna come and find white fuzzy stuff on your specimens and you find your specimens ruined. So what I'll do, I'll put my gravel down, I'll put my chlorocresol crystals in, and not a whole lot, guys. Like a, like a quarter of a tablespoon of chlorocresol crystals will last you for a long time. And then what I'll do is I'll put paper towels on top of this, just in case insect specimens fall down. You don't wanna lose them in your substrate. So, you know, I have my paper towel down here as a barrier. And then even on top of that, I cut a piece of styrofoam to the shape of my container. And now I just have a little gap right here where I cut where the, the gas will fill the rest of the, of the container here and rehydrate the specimens. I like the styrofoam because there's, it doesn't stay wet. Like the, the water is down under here. You don't want this to be wet and saturated. The water's gotta be down underneath here. Uh, if, you, if this thing is wet, then and you put your butterfly in here to let them rehydrate, then it's gonna take the scales off your butterfly wings and that's not good. Now it's time to put your specimens in guys. And so one of the things that's very important is 
Only put into your rehydration chamber what you can mount in one sitting. And so you don't want to put 50 butterfly specimens in a rehydration chamber if you only have the patience to mount 10. Because then what's going to happen is your specimens are going to sit in here and they're going to start to decompose because of the humidity. Uh, and even if you have the chlorocresol, and maybe they won't fungus, but they will decompose if they stay in here long enough. And so you want to make sure you can only put in here what you can mount in one sitting, all right? So now I've got my, this is actually Morphopilites. And I'm trying to do this with one hand. Usually I would do this with a pair of forceps, but I try and be gentle enough. All right, so I've got my, my Morphopilites. And here I've got a Heliconius Sappho. And I will put them in here. And let's just say this is what I want to make for my display. All right, that's it. I put my lid on. And now it's a waiting game. Usually, if, if you boil your water, those specimens might be ready to mount. And they might be flexible enough to mount within a couple hours. I would wait overnight, probably the following day, before I were to try to do it. I would let them rehydrate for uh, you know, at least five, six, seven hours before I would try to uh, flex their wings. Especially, these specimens were very dry. Uh, they have no natural body fluids whatsoever, and they are super, super crispy. So uh, <laughs> you don't want to try and flex your butterfly wings until it is time. Now, finally, if you don't get to all your specimens in one sitting, you know, you can leave them in there another day. But I would not leave them in any longer than 48 hours uh, because they will start to decompose. And that's about it. So, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. This is a cool bug. They're prettier on the inside. In fact, let me show you what they look like on the inside. Actually, I don't have a Polites in here. Well, it looks something like that. But if you like butterflies and moths and you like insect specimens, guys, um, comment down below what you'd like for me to do next. And I can show you how to curate an insect specimen for scientific research. So, guys, uh, like, like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, let's enjoy our bugs. Take care now.